Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Tech Infused. If you are the person who wants to know everything about your car, then you must have heard about the term OBD or Onboard Diagnostics. In this video, we are going to learn about OBD and this is the right place for that. In next few minutes, I'm going to transfer all important information straight to your head. So stay tuned and let's begin. Before we start understanding what is OBD and we can relate what OBD can do for us, we need to understand about a very important component called ECU or electronic control unit which is present in every modern vehicle. So ECU is like an embedded microcontroller based system which you can find in every car and it is connected to a lot of components and subsystems inside a vehicle like your engine, your transmission system, your wheels, your seat belt, your AC, your uh, crankshaft, your coolant. There are lots and lots of components to which this computer is connected through some kind of sensors or actuators and it constantly keeps on collecting information related to the entire operations of that vehicle. Some of the examples which I have placed here includes fuel injection, the temperature of the coolant or air, the RPM of the engine, the speed of the vehicle, whether you have attached the seat belt or not the anti-lock braking system and many more. You will be surprised to know that there are around 60 to 100 sensors which are constantly capturing information about various different components inside your vehicle today and it is said that by 2020 when new vehicles will be manufactured the number of sensors will grow up to 200. So if I want to define in simple layman's term that what is OBD, then I can say that OBD is a capability which helps monitor the performance and issues in a vehicle's engine, transmission and other subsystems. Now over here you will get the idea of how the data is collected and extracted for our use. So every vehicle has an OBD2 port since a lot of years, right? I mean, the OBD technology came into picture in 1996. And if you talk about the vehicles uh, in India, then post 2012 or post 2010, almost all the modern vehicles have a port called OBD2. This is a 16 port, uh, sorry, a 16 pin port, which is exactly placed under the steering wheel or under the glove box. And to this port, we can connect a device known as an OBD2 adapter or OBD2 scanner. Now there is an open source hardware available in the market known as ELM327 which you can get very easily at any e-commerce store so you can purchase that and that's the adapter which is exactly going to fit inside the OBD2 port of your vehicle. Now this OBD2 port is actually connected to your ECU which is collecting a lot of information and storing it. So like every computer has a USB through which you can connect your storage devices and read or write information. In the same way for a car, the computer which is present inside that car that you can read and write information inside that computer or ECU through this port known as OBD2. So when you are going to connect your ELM327 or your any OBD2 adapter inside this port, this adapter will be able to read and write that information. Now, if you want to read 
the sensor data and want to make sense out of that data and use it, then you will require a receiver device which could be simply a smartphone. Now, the OBD2 adapter which I am talking about transmits information through Bluetooth. So, like any simple Bluetooth device, like a Bluetooth dongle or a simple Bluetooth headphone, you have to connect this device with your smartphone and then by using various types of softwares which are available in the market today like OBD Doctor or Torque, you will be able to read that information. Of course, you have to configure that software based on what type of information you want to read but that is a very simple thing and I will definitely show you this in my next video of how to connect this adapter and how to configure your software to start reading the information. Now once this is done, next question is what can we do with that data, right? Anybody will ask you what are you going to do after fitting this adapter and reading that information. So a lot of automobile professionals, data science professionals and IoT uh, engineers who are working on automotive uh, intelligence or automobile uh, automation, these people use this data for research and development to bring in some new tools and technologies surrounding that. Not only that, even a regular uh, car user who loves his car and who wants to know everything about the car can also use this data up to certain extent and uh, you know use this information for a lot of purpose so let's check out first thing what we can do with the OBD data is to keep a check on how good our vehicle is performing in terms of fuel economy we can very easily track the amount of fuel which is consumed by our vehicle going from a particular source to destination. So let's say that if I'm going to office every day from my home, then I can configure my software in a way that the data which is collected through OBD can be used for calculation and my software can precisely tell me what amount of money I'm spending on day-to-day -day basis from home to office and office to home. Next is finding out the exact faults for diagnostics. So OBD data comes in different types and one of the type is known as diagnostics trouble codes or DTC. So these DTC is nothing but a kind of a log which gives you information about a specific kind of a problem which has occurred in your car. So if you are a computer user, you know it very well that when something goes wrong in your operating system or something goes wrong in your hardware or in software, then you get an error message, right? That error message comes with an ID number and some kind of detail and if you read that information and if you are a technician of course you will be able to make sense out of it and use that information to troubleshoot that issue and resolve the performance right in the same way every vehicle's OBD data will have something known as DTC we can use this DTC to troubleshoot and check out how a component is affected and how we can go ahead and troubleshoot that particular component. Next, we have another uh, option which is for tuning the engine's performance. Now, a lot of professionals who are, uh, you know, who, who, who usually, uh, you know, use their cars for racing or stunts or doing some kind of a scientific research, they always come up with some kind of a, you know, some kind of a hack inside the vehicle. And that hack could be maybe uh, changing the power of the engine. It might change 
uh, the way the fuel is utilized, it might change the way the transmission is going to work. There are lots and lots of things which could be changed because nowadays everything is controlled in a digital way, right? And when things are controlled in a digital way through a computer, you can do a lot of things. Now, because you have got an access to the ECU through the OBD port, now you can also make some kind of programming changes inside ECU and then your vehicle's engine might perform in a different way as you require. Of course, this needs a lot and lot of expertise in doing so, but this is also one of the reasons why OBD is used in the market. Then we can also go ahead and perform tracking and geofencing on the vehicle. If your OBD device has the capability to also read and understand the GPS data and if it has some kind of a GPS chip or arrangement, then it will also keep a track on the location of the vehicle and not only that a lot of logistics companies are also coming up with geofencing solutions so geofencing uh, is a solution where you can set up a configuration in such a way that if your vehicle goes through a route which it is not supposed to then an alert will be generated so the moment your vehicle is going off course you will get a notification. So geofencing is a process where you are defining your geographical limits and your GPS route through which your vehicle should go. If it is not following that path, then you will automatically receive the information about that. And finally, we can also do a lot of predictive analytics. Now, when I say predictive analytics, it means that we as data science professionals can extract that information and use artificial intelligence technologies to you know create a model where on a regular basis maybe per minute per hour on some kind of a frequency this data which is collected from the vehicle will be processed regularly through the machine learning models and if you are able to create an efficient machine learning model, then based on the data which the OBD is providing, your machine learning model could be very intelligent to let you know that based on a certain kind of change which it is uh, recording in the vehicle, there are chances that a certain damage might happen in future. It will predict what component can be damaged in future or what can go wrong in a vehicle in future and for that the OBD data is also used for predictive analytics. So these are some of the use cases for OBD and I hope that you really enjoyed this video and you have really got the crux of what is OBD. We are definitely going to move ahead with the series and I'm going to come up with other videos where we are going to learn more about OBD. In my next video, I'm going to practically show you how to connect the OBD, how to configure that and how to read the data from OBD from a running vehicle. So meet you in the next video. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.